Hi, my name is Robert. I'm a DIY person and I'm starting this new YouTube channel. I'm going to label it as the DIY Big Guy because I'm a big person. <clears throat> so, basically, I'm putting this channel out there for a lot of those who like to do their own work or want to do their own work but are not sure how to go about doing it. So these are just tips and things that I've figured out along the way that I've learned from my father and passing down to my kids on how to repair things, install things such as electrical, plumbing, small motors, boat repairs, carpentry, welding, and so forth. So today I'm going to do a little video on installing a fuel tank from Skidoo. It's the uh, jerry can. And I'm going to change this camera around so you can see what the part number is. <clears throat> this is the kit for the jerry can. And this is the jerry can assembled. This model they don't make anymore, but it's still available out there at some dealers. Um, I picked this one up off of eBay, brand new, for $50. Why would I buy that versus the Link Q? Well, I have the Link Q. The Link Q goes for $140, and it carries the same amount of gas than this model. For 50 they're both skidoo I don't care how the can is held onto the sled but I'm looking at trying to save money and that's the whole point of this channel is how to try to save money so I placed the can on here and I didn't want to go too far forward because when my snowmobile cover comes over it goes over this I know this is removable, but in order for the snowmobile cover to work properly, this needs to stay on. Okay, so I'm putting this on backwards, I'm taking the V and going against this V versus the directions showing it to go this way. I don't want this sticking out, I want this sticking in. So my feet don't get hung up when I swing them over the seat. <clears throat> so look at how I've placed the holders. And I'm going to mark them with a pencil so I know where I need to drill or where the shape is in relation to the rivets that are on here right now. So I can see the rivets here, and I have no interference with the rivets. Same here. Now the next question is, before I drill anything, this is your cooling veins underneath the, inside the tunnel. <clears throat> if I'm drilling here, I just wanna make sure I'm not hitting that area underneath the tunnel. smaller rivets are on the outside of the cooling fins underneath and then right here are my 
tunnel protectors so my spikes don't penetrate this or my studs so I'm going to go ahead and drill this in but mark it first Get that in. With the kit comes your rivets as well as another set of brackets that have to be mounted. And also bolts. The bolts, eight bolts. A variety of rivets. I guess it depends, you have choices here on how you're gonna install this. And I really haven't put too much thought into it. Here are your rivets, by the way. They get two different size. Because this has a higher depth, higher depth, that doesn't make sense. Because it's a little higher inside. As you can see this here. I'm gonna use bolts for this. So they hang inside the tunnel long enough, low enough. Uh, where's my drill chart? Thirteen sixty four is the hole size I need for these holes. I drill metal holes. I use this the countersink bit. That way it'll get rid of the sharp edge on the hole. And I won't get any metal slivers. Of these eight bolts, actually two different sizes. I could show them that way, show them to you. So I'm going to go with the shorter one if it sticks up just enough to be able to put a nut on. Yeah.
So the Allen head is American. Go figure. And then the nut is eight metric. Okay, of course when I installed the things, I put them on backwards from the way I want to install them. I also changed the bolt. Instead of having the bolt going up into it and then doing the nut in here, I reversed it. It was a lot easier to tighten it from underneath with a socket than it was trying to do it with the... Uh, Allen key. So now it fits like it's supposed to. The next thing I have to install are these. And I will do that at another time. But give you an idea, I kind of go on the edge here. But I'll have to put the straps on to make sure if I want it here on the side or kind of towards the front. I'll have to figure that out. But that hut has to go on next. So, till tomorrow. All right, day two. We're going to install these on this side, but I put the straps on here because I want to see how this lays out. Plus, you can kind of see what happens when you reverse the tank. The tank has a buckle system. But you can see it's underneath the seat. That doesn't concern me at all because like I said, this is only on here when I have to trailer it. If we pop the seat out. This comes off. Now, we have access to the buckle. No issues. All right. So, of course, it's your choice how you want to mount it. 
but I'm gonna mount this and uh, the brackets these brackets here are held on with rivets so taking a drill chart I wanted to see what size drill bit I needed and there's two ways of doing rivets there's this method with the uh, hand rivet gun I got one with a rotating head the other method is a pneumatic rivet gun the difference between the two this is obviously easier but this pulls the rivet much tighter so it has a better hold I found when you do the rivet gun the rivet over time wiggles loose so I tend to use this as often as I can if I can do the work inside my garage so that's what we're going to use. So, next is placement. just using a pencil again to mark it. The reason I chose to do this on the side is just, that's where the buckle falls versus pulling it in the front. It's right on the side. I'm going to take my countersink. That's a countersink. And just take the burrs off the holes. Grab my rivets. In the package, it comes with two sets of rivets. This is one, and this is two. I find that this one here is a little too big, the head itself. This one here is the right size.
you ever have a rivet that does not break off, grab a pair of these, I think they call these nines or dykes, something like that. Just bend it back and forth and it'll break off flush. All right. So, here's what it looks like installed. So let's throw the tank on. And there you go. That's the old style fuel tank. Like I said, I don't think they make it anymore, but it's still out there from an inventory standpoint. I do my hooks in and then out. You can kind of see it right here. That way they stay in better if it gets jostled around. <clears throat> and then that's the Link Q system. 140, 50 bucks. I will say it is a pain in the butt to install compared to a Link Q. Link Q is much, much easier. But if you're trying to save some money, uh, I'd rather spend the 50 bucks. And the difference there is like three registrations for his sleds. So hopefully uh, this helped you out. Give me a thumbs up if you did like it and it did help. Uh, any questions or comments, you can leave them below and I will try to get back to you. Thank you very much. Take care.